All right. Good morning. How is everybody today? We are up to week 10. We're getting real close to the end. We're probably two thirds of the way uh, through the course at this particular point in time. And we are going to continue along our path of learning about geometry. So we got some homework answers to go over, a do it to cover, some review work. We always spiral that in. And then today we're going to begin by talking about parallelograms. Um, for the next lesson this week, we'll finish up parallelograms and get into similar figures. Well, the, fam the parallelogram family. Okay, so here's the homework answers for homework number 18, given that this is lesson number 19. Give it a shot. Take a look. You know about stop and start and pausing this particular page. And this one as well. As always, any issues, any questions, seek me out for some office hours. And let's start with today's do it. Go ahead, stop and start. Go. Okay, so we have this particular rectangle. We always like to draw a figure. And we know that the length is 12 more than the width. Um, and there's some key words at the end of this particular sentence that says, well, this question that says round to the nearest hundredth of a foot. That means it is highly likely, not a guarantee, but highly likely that you will need the quadratic formula or completing the square to solve this particular problem. So length times width has to be 120. W squared plus 12W, get it all on one side, minus 120 is zero. So I'm going to go with the quadratic formula. If I did completing the square, I would not get it all on one side. So, A is 1, B is 12, C is negative 120. So, X will be, or W will be, the negative of B, which is negative 12, plus or minus the square root of 12 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 120, all over 2 times 1. Which, if we keep going, is negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 plus 480, all over 2 which is negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 624 all over 2. And keep in mind, all you got to do is put in the square root of, oh, excuse me, 624 into the calculator. That works out to be 12.979 divided by 2. There is also a negative answer, but I don't bother following up with that one because we know we can't have a negative length or width for that matter. So X works out to be 6.49. It says near its hundredth, so I am all done. As always, anytime you have difficulty with this problem, at some point, either now or at the end of the lesson, go back and do the problem over again. It's one of the greatest things about everything being on video. Okay, let's practice this quadratic formula question. I put the formula there as a reminder. Start up on it now. You might hear my dogs bark if they do, I apologize. It's my wife pulling up, getting home, and there's not much I can do. So give it a try. Okay. So here is the answers after stop and start. We got A is 1, B is negative 5, C is negative 2. So X will be the negative of negative 5, right, negative B. Plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared. Make sure that's in parentheses in your calculator. Otherwise, it will give you the wrong answer. Or it's like if you have a graphing calculator, it will give you the wrong answer. And if it's not graphing, then it's likely to. Um, minus 4 times 1 times negative 2 over 2 times 1. That's uh, 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 8, which is 33 over 2. That would be choice 3. Okay. A little practice with parallel lines cut by a transversal. Stop and start. Go ahead. So which of these two guys are not always going to be congruent? Well, those two guys that will not always be congruent are choice one. Angle BGH is here, and angle DHG is here. That's one acute and one obtuse. And we, we said in this particular diagram, if one is acute, and one is obtuse, clearly they're not equal because acute's less than 90, obtuse greater than 90, less than 180. Um, but they also have to add up to 180. Okay, let's try this one. 
a little cross multiplication and sob. You'll hear barking for a minute or so. Um, I'll let it run a hair longer while my wife gets the dog situated. Go ahead. Okay, I have to speak over the dogs barking, because maybe it will help. They're going outside, and as soon as they're outside, yes, as soon as they go outside, then they will have no more noise. So, okay, we cross multiply. Uh-oh, this is the wrong solution. But this is the same card. So, forget the previous card. This is the same exact question. So, let's just go through it now. Ready? Cross multiplying, I get um, x minus 3 times x minus 3 is x squared minus 6x plus 9. I did it a little quickly. And x times x plus 3 is x squared plus 3x. So, this is the same question as the previous question. I'm just, uh, for some reason, I, had, I forgot to take out that other slide. Uh, get it all on one side. Oh, look at that. We get the x squareds cancel out. And I get... Um, Negative 9x plus 9 is 0. Subtract 9 from both sides. I get x is negative 1. And that's the correct solution. Okay. Perform the indicated operations and simplify. Two different questions there. Stop and start. And then we'll go over both of them. Okay. So for the first one, we factor and cancel. Factor and cancel. All that you do is you factor and cancel. Uh-oh, I made a mistake on this first one. Look at this. For the second one, I thought this was division, and I flipped it. Well, that's not good. Let's go. I don't know how to pause this and edit it without things that are going on. So I just have to edit it while you're watching it. So this is going to be 4x plus 1. And this is going to be x plus 2. And this, go right back into there. And I can add in two other ones to reduce. I can do insert. If you ever wanted to know how to do this, this is how you do it. Okay. Good. Animations. Up here. Copy. Paste. And they need to go after step two or with step two. with previous good and now let's go back to the slideshow and start this up and now we have that all corrected okay so I thought it was division before it was not it was multiplication so all corrected you get to see how a trained professional handles an emergency situation so now factoring x squared minus x minus 6 it's x minus 3 times x plus 2 Factoring 3x squared minus 10x plus 3, I get 3x minus 1 times x minus 3. Again, we did factoring so long ago, you should be really good at that. And it doesn't require explanation. That should have been taught from way back when. Uh, the next one, 4x plus 1 times x minus 2, and then x plus 2, x minus 2. Here are your cancellations, and I'm left with 4x plus 1 over 3x minus 1. And there's the correct answer to number 1. Number 2. I have x minus 6 over x plus 3, x minus 3 plus 5 over x minus 3. So the denominator on the left has everything we need. The denominator on the right needs an x plus 3. So that's x minus 6 over x plus 3, x minus 3 plus, distributing the 5, 5x five plus 15 over x plus 3, x minus 3. Combining like terms, 
6x plus 9 over x plus 3, x minus 3 is the final answer. So if you can do that kind of algebra problem, you're in real good shape because there's some um, higher level factoring involved. There is making sure you get a common category with which to combine when you're adding and subtracting. So you're in good shape if you can do that question. Okay, let's try these two. Go ahead, stop and start. Okay, so for the first one, as always, we draw a diagram. An isosceles triangle has two equal sides, and because of that, the base angles across from them are also equal. So we get a 3x plus 13 and a 3x plus 13. And the vertex angle, because the base angles are 13 more than three times the vertex angle, the vertex angle was the x we started with. So two of those 3x plus 13s plus the x at the top, the vertex angle, has got to add up to 180 because all three angles of a triangle add up to 180. 6x plus 26 plus x is 180. 7x plus 26, 7x is 154 when we subtract 26 from both sides. x is 22, and the vertex angle is x, so it's 22. The base angle would be 3 times 22 plus 13 if you wanted that. That works out to be 79. Okay, as far as the last one goes, if the lengths of two sides of a triangle are 2 and 5, the length of the third side cannot be... Well, it cannot be 3, because if you add that 3 to the 2, you get 2 plus 3 is 5, and that 5 is not greater than one of the sides. It's equal to one of the sides, and we know that can't happen. It has to be bigger. Okay, let's try this vertical angle reminder. Okay, so uh, vertical angles are congruent, right? Great big X. So 11X minus 11 has to equal 2X plus 34. Subtracting the 2X, adding the 11, I get 9X is 45. X is 5. The measure of angle A, 11 times 5 minus 11 is 44. Let's just show it works with B also. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 34 is 44. So that confirms they are correct. Okay. Oh, this goes through twice. Wish I hadn't. Okay, supplementary angles. What do you remember about supplementary angles? Well, two angles next to each other share a common edge, make a straight line. They're adjacent angles. They are always supplementary, which means because together they make a half a circle, they add up to 180 degrees. Go ahead, stop and start. Okay, so they add up to 180. So 5n plus 10 plus 3n plus 10 is 180. That gives me 8n plus 20, right? Combining like terms, same side, same operation. Subtracting the 20, 8n is 160, n is 20. All right, so that's a review of a lot of the recent geometry material, some of the important algebra material that we have done, and so on. Um, Parallel concepts, the concepts of parallel lines cut by a transversal as it applies to parallelogram. Now, the great big green figure in the middle is a parallelogram. And what I want you to notice is that we have a whole bunch of transversals here cut by parallel lines. You could look at the parallel lines as the two that are going more or less up and down and then cut by the long transversals that are horizontal. Or you could look at the parallel lines as the two horizontal ones and then cut twice by the more vertical um, transversals. So just like we had the idea that consecutive interior angles add up to 180, that's going to be a parallelogram property. Um, just like we had the idea that all of the acute angles were congruent, then therefore the opposite angles are going to be congruent, and all the obtuses are congruent, so the opposites will be congruent there. It all comes into play because it's multiple applications of two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So when we go over these parallelogram concepts, rather than um, focus on this whole new set of uh, properties that you have to memorize, look at it as an extension of the parallel lines cut by a transversal. So there's a four-sided figure called the quadrilateral, right? Quad means four. There's two branches within this. 
there is the parallelogram family, kind of like the Adams family, you know? Do, 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 do. 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 They're creepy and they're kooky. They're all together spooky. Da, 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 da. The parallelogram family. Da, 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 da. And so on. And then there's, of course, the non-parallelograms, which include the trapezoid, among other things. Okay? Also an isosceles trapezoid. Now, for the parallelogram family, we get Papa Parallelogram. And... Just like your mom and dad have certain traits. I remember I remember being a kid. Man, I was the firstborn. Anybody else out there been the firstborn? Did you ever notice how much easier your younger brothers and sisters have it than you did? And if you're a younger brother and sister, I'm telling you, this is the truth. Because the older brothers and sisters, man, they are not allowed to do anything. Parenting does not come with much of an owner's manual. Parenting is frightening as can be it is absolutely terrifying when you begin it and it gets bad right through about the age you're at now and what happens is you are terrified of your child getting hurt at all ages through adulthood but particularly when they're young because you are so responsible for them so i lived on long island this quaint little town called blue point really a fantastic amazing place to grow up and there was one main, well, there were two main roads. One was very far north of us, Sunrise Highway. And the other one was called Montauk Highway. And with Montauk Highway, it was a two-lane road at a light. And I was not allowed to cross that road until I was like 15 or 16. Now, Lord knows I did it before then, but I wasn't allowed. And my sisters, one younger, my first younger sister is three years younger than me, and the other one's another three for a total of six. Um, they were allowed to cross at like 12 or 11. They probably did it earlier too. But the, the restrictions on the oldest are very, very, very significant. So when I was a kid, or when I first became a parent, one, one of the things about being a kid was because my parents were so restrict, or so strict with me is I would uh, like go up to my parents and I'd start asking for something. I'd go like, Mom, Dad, can I? And then fill in a blank, whatever, cross the road. Go play baseball with my friends. As soon as I would say, can I, before I even got the thought out, my parents would no, no. I don't know, maybe your parents were like that too. So I would hear that and I was like, oh, they're not even letting me finish the sentence. So then when my son started speaking and they started saying to me, Daddy, can I? I had such an urge to say no before they finished their sentence. Now, I forced myself not to, but I had the urge. It was like something that I didn't genetically inherit from my parents, but behaviorally, I, as much as that's inherited, I've learned it, whatever, from my parents. And likewise, the, the people in the parallelogram family, the shapes in the parallelogram family, they inherit the tendencies of Papa Parallelogram. So anything that's true for Papa Parallelogram is true for the rest of his family. The rectangle, the rhombus, and the square. Now, they, they're not exactly like their parents, just like you're not exactly like your parents, but they, are, they do share certain traits in common. My dad was a great drummer. I can't play drums for the life of me. Um, my dad was not much of a fisherman, and I'm a pretty good fisherman. So um, you don't get everything from them, but you get certain core traits. I'd like to think my dad's an honest man. I'm an honest man. Um, my dad really taught us the importance of um, family and community and neighbors. I've, been, I've gotten that. My dad lost his hair at some point. My hair's gone, all right? Um Certain physical traits, like a lot of people come up to me and, and they haven't seen me in a while and go, man, Bob, you look so much like your dad. So it's very similar properties from Pap Papa Parallelogram passed down. What are those properties? Well, here they are. Um, by the way, I always think it's a good idea to take a picture of this with your phone and have a folder on your phone that has like notes. And then you can always look through them very quickly when you've got a few minutes to study. 
So here are the properties. The opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. That's what these two marks mean right here. The same number of marks. That means those two sides are, oh, I'm sorry, parallels first. These little marks here. These two sides are parallel. So are the ones on the left and the right. The opposite sides are congruent. That's what the little hash marks mean. Okay. Um, the opposite angles are congruent. Here they are. And that's, we talked to you before about that being an extension of um, all the acute angles being congruent, and then also all the obtuse angles being congruent, okay? Um, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. It's the first time we've come up with this word bisect. It means to cut into two equal parts. Bi meaning two, sect meaning cut, bisect. And then, and, and, so there's another example where you don't have to study the word bisect like crazy. Understand what bisect means. Cut into two, and then remember equal parts. And then conse consecutive angles of a parallelogram, like this one up here and this one over here, are supplementary. And of course, that's pretty easy to remember because we remember the diagram of the parallel lines cut by the transversal that box this in. And um, those would be consecutive interior angles, which always add up to 180. There's those lines being boxed in to remind you. Okay, so... Um, Here's the first question for you to solve. Solve for x. We're just going to apply these properties for a little while. Of course, you're on stop and start. Okay, so the opposite sides are equal. 3x minus 6 is not opposite, or, or its opposite doesn't have any measurement, so we can't use that one. But I can use the 5x minus 18 and the 2x plus 2. They're equal. x is on one side, numbers on the other. 3x is 30. x works out to be 10. Okay? What's the length of a side? It's going to be 3 times 10 minus 6 is 24. The other sides, I, let me go back because I didn't even look those up. For the other side, I would get 2 times 10 is 20 plus 12 is 32. Okay, try this guy. Similar problem to do. Oh, it says it up the top here. Sorry, find AD. That's what they need you to do. Go ahead. Okay, so opposite sides are equal. So that means the 3x plus 5 will equal 6x minus 10. Uh, get letters on one side, numbers on the other. 3x is 15, dividing, and I get x is 5. To find AD, I plug in the 5. 4 times 5 is 20, minus 5 is 15. Okay. As always, if any of these problems give you difficulties, go back, watch the videotape section over again. So what we applied there was the principle that the opposite sides of a parallelogram, AB and CD, those opposite sides, they're across from each other. That's what opposite means. They're going to be equal. Okay, for this one, remember the property that said the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. And up on the tan there at the top, it says find x, find the length of HO, and the length of HJ, which is the whole thing. Go ahead. Okay, so diagonals bisect each other. That means they cut each other in half. So that means the two pieces, x plus 40 and 2x plus 18, have to be equal. Subtracting x, subtracting 18, and I get x is 22. So I did the first part of the problem. Now, find HO. HO will be x, which is 22, plus 40, so that's 62. Now, HJ is two equal pieces of... 62. So 62 times 2 is 124. Or you could plug in the 22 for x here. 2 times 22 is 44. Plus 18 is 62. At the 62 and 62 make 124. Okay, so what must x and y be if this is a parallelogram? Go ahead. 
chance to use a little bit of linear math and a little bit of algebraic uh, quadratic math. Okay, so first we're going to find x. The 3x minus 40 has to equal x. I subtract the x, I add the 40. 2x is 40, dividing by 2, and I get x is 20. Okay, and you could check it out here, right? This is 20, and then 3 times 20 is 60, minus 40 is 20. So that shows the diagonals are indeed bisecting each other. That's what we're looking for here, because it is a parallelogram. x must be 20 for it to be a parallelogram. Now, on the other side, y squared has to equal y plus 30. Get it all on one side because it's a quadratic. Factor it. Now, you know that the y plus 5 factor is going to have a negative answer, so I don't need to worry about that. y minus 6 is 0. y is equal to 6. You can reject the negative 5 answer. And that makes sense because 6 squared is 36, and 6 plus 30 is 36. Okay? If they gave you this problem on a test, it's often a multiple choice question, and you can guess and check. A little test savvy. Find all the other angles. Remember, in a parallelogram, these are some of those properties you took a picture of. Opposite sides are congruent. Uh, opposite angles, I'm sorry, are congruent, and consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay, so... That means angle Y is going to equal, or angles C and B, 145, Y, all of that. They're all the same because they're opposite angles. Consecutive angles are going to add up to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 145 is 35. That makes X 35, which makes Z 35. Okay. And there are your two parallel lines cut by a transversal showing that the consecutive interior angles, the 35 here and the 145 angles, X and Y, add up to 180 degrees. Okay, what must X and Y be for this to be a parallelogram? Go ahead. Now, for this to be a parallelogram, all those properties must be true, which means the opposite angles have to be equal, and the consecutive angles must be supplementary. So if opposite angles are equal, 3y has to equal 42, y is 14. And if the x, to find the x then, 8x minus 6 plus 42 has got to equal 180, because the consecutive angles add up to 180, as we've shown multiple times in in diagrams so far today. Uh, 8x plus 36, doing a little same side, same operation there, is 180. Subtracting the 36, 8x is 144. And x is 18. Oh, excuse me. All right, find x in this one. This time you know it's a parallelogram. Find x. Okay. 1x plus 2x has got to equal 180. 3x is 180. x is 60. Pretty straightforward. Find x and y. Now, I know you want to say that that's a rectangle, but you can't say that that's a rectangle. It looks like one, but we're not sure until we crunch these numbers out. What we do know for sure is that it's a parallelogram because the opposite sides are congruent. Of course, we know that by the marks. So let's start with solving for x. The 2x plus 33 has to equal 3x. Subtracting the 2x from both sides, and I get x is 33. Now, that means that this upper corner angle here is 99, right? Because 3 times 33 is 99. So is 2 times 33 plus 33. And what that means is it's not quite a rectangle. As far as the y goes, um, y has to be 81 because the y plus this angle and this angle over here either one of them has to add up to 180 degrees 
So 180 minus 99 is 81. So y has to be 81. The happy recap. In a linear system, if you're going to use elimination, it has to be aligned. Substitution not aligned. We talked about that. Quadratic linear system, always substitute. You will need those two principles, or at least one of those principles, on your homework tonight. So I mentioned it, I believe, for the last time in this particular lesson. Parallel lines cut by a transversal. All the acute angles are equal. All the obtuse angles are equal. One acute plus one obtuse is 180. And that transfers to the properties of a parallelogram. Okay, so we're applying that principle to our study of parallelograms. So we don't have to go crazy memorizing new rules. And number four, great big X means the angles across from each other are vertical, so they're equal. And the next to each other are supplementary. They make a straight line. As far as the parallelogram goes, the opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel and congruent. Bisect means to cut into two equal parts. The diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. The opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. Consecutive angles of a parallelogram are supplementary. All, well, not the lengths, but anything with angles in that summary all relate back to two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay. The last thing I want to do before we end today is I want to talk a little bit about the oldest child in the parallelogram family. Do 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 do. Pop pop. Do 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 do. Pop pop. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. The rectangle. Pretty much everybody alive remembers that a rectangle has four right angles, four congruent right angles. That's a true statement. But it's important that. The diagonals are also congruent to each other. That's not true in any old parallelogram, but it is true in a rectangle, which is a type of parallelogram. Because we are a little different from our parents. Like I said before, my dad, he pretty much couldn't catch a fish to save his life. I caught a lot of fish in my life, all right? Um, so I do have unique traits that my dad did not have. My parents did not do well at school. I did well at school. Um, so it does have every trait of Papa parallelogram, but it's got two special traits. One, it's got right angles in all the corners. Okay. Second one is that the diagonals from corner to corner, they're going to be congruent. Okay. Give that a shot. Okay, so for this particular problem, uh, a right triangle has 90 degrees in it, uh, 180 degrees in any triangle, but one of the angles is 90 degrees. That means the other two have to add up to 90 degrees. So 3x plus 2x plus 20 plus that 90 has to be 180. 5x plus 110 is 180. Minusing the 110, 5x is 70. Dividing, and I get x is... 14. But it also wants me to find the measure of angle 1. Well, there's a couple of different ways to do 1. One of the ways is to say 3 times 14 is 42, and then do 90 minus 14, because that's those two angles are complementary there. That's one way to do it. Okay. Um, so there's your 2 times 14 is 28, plus 20 is 48. And the angle 1, here's your alternate interior angles. Parallel, parallel those are alternate interior angles and that gives me um that correct answer of well, let me go back to that because what's the measure of angle one this guy up here is 48 and here's your alternate interior angle right alternate changing sides interior between the parallel lines so that's also 48. okay this is just uh it, it's a rectangle but because of that, remember, those diagonals are congruent, and they're both being bisected. Okay, so 2x plus 4 has to equal 5x plus 1. Getting letters on one side, numbers on the other. x works out to be 1. Okay? It wants the length of AE, which is the whole thing, 
So if I do 2 times 1 plus 4, I get 6, and then the whole length will be 12. You've got to double that 6. Okay, similar question. So 3x plus 1 is 2x plus 4, and like before, that also works out just so coincidentally to have a value of 3. Okay, it wants nr. nr will be double the 2 times x plus 4. So 2 times 3 is 6 plus 4 is 10. And doubling it gets you 20. Okay. Give this a shot. It's a rectangle. Remember that. So find x in this rectangle. Now remember what that angle, the whole angle down there at P, if you put those two together, the great big angle they make up. So 18x minus 18 is 90. Adding the 18. 18x is 108, and this is really important because together they make a 90 degree angle. That's where we came up with the 90 from. Dividing, and I get x is 6. <clears throat> Always the first lesson of the week. I like to remind you of the ways to succeed. Do all of the homework. There are still a couple of people in class who don't do that. Just about all of you do, and you will really be appreciative of it at the end of the market period. It's all about how you go about your business. Doing it the right way, the grades follow. Pay attention to due dates. I just had another professor at the school text me before I started recording this video saying that a number of her students are not paying attention to due dates on Moodle and they've missed quizzes and so on and there are no makeups. Um, work together on projects. If we give you a project to do, collaborate. Take pride in your work every day is a chance to realize your dream. You're either moving closer to the future you want or you're staying still. And if you're staying still, everybody else is passing you by. Have an awesome day. Take care now.